Hello and good morning, this is Dom Britton and this is my SLK 230K R170. Uh, you will have seen it in some of my other videos. On this one I want to show you how to change your drive belt. And I know what you're going to say, oh there's loads of videos. Yes, and I've looked at these videos and they do not show you how to release the tensioner correctly. They just say release the tensioner. So what does that mean? I'm going to show you. Okay. These are the belts on the 230K. Now the one that I was concerned about is this one. This is the one that drives all the accessories. You know, that's your water pump, that's your power steering, that's your air conditioning, and this big one is the crank. Now what you'll see is this is a supercharger model there, supercharger. You can't take this belt off because it goes onto the crank and there's another belt in the way. That other belt is the one that goes to the supercharger and herein lies the problem. If you look at the books and everything, they say all you need to do is put a socket on this tensioner here, turn it anti-clockwise, it will drop down and you can release the belt. Yes, but there's another one down there for the supercharger. So what's the problem? In both cases, the tensioner is released with this socket. Right? It's a star shape. Or, I found, so it's an E10CR. You can use an 8mm uh, spanner, but you won't get enough leverage. I'll show you. Right, here's that socket on a normal hand drive, and you put it down on the main, uh, it's difficult to do one-handed, right, okay, it's on, so it's on, that's the norm, that's for the drive belt for your normal drive, and you can see you can move it, but it's very strong, it's not really long enough, anyway, when you go down to try and do the supercharger one, you can't get it on because it's too fat. Remember, I said you can use a spanner. Okay, let's get a spanner. This is an 8mm spanner, ratchet one, which in theory you can do the same thing. But in practice, there's no room. And when you get it on, there's no way. You cannot get enough pressure on it. It's impossible. You can see it a bit better on this one. Yes, you can get it on, and you can, with all your strength, just slightly move it. It's not going to work. So how did all these people in their videos do it then? Well, they had to buy a special tool that they didn't tell you about. I spent a lot of time on the internet looking for Mercedes special tools for these tensioners, and I drew a blank that wasn't one. And then by chance I looked on an American site and I found pictures of a tool which is basically a flat bar with a drive on the end which obviously is a sort of thing. So you now I looked on Amazon and eBay for generic belt tensioners and these are what I found. Right, this one is called a Nielsen timing belt set and it comes with various attachments. As you can see they're about £12. And it has a half drive one, a bar which you don't need for this Mercedes, and this long one with a 3 8 which you do need. It also has various attachments, but obviously we only need the socket they've shown you. Anyway, then I looked and I found this other one as well. This one was on eBay. I think, I think the red one was on Amazon and the yellow one was on eBay, but it's exactly the same. So, basically, you need this because you can see with the socket on it's going to be a lot smaller so I'll show it in place and obviously you've got a lot of leverage because it's a nice long bar. Okay now there's the socket on our nice long bar. I'm going to push it down there to where the supercharger is and see if there's any space because you certainly can't get a normal ratchet on it so let's have a look. Okay, 
you know you can see look at all that space and because the bar is so long easily look at that easily works so this is the secret tool you need to take this off that no one's shown you before on their videos but first of all you need to make a note of how the drive belts run now I took pictures of them but it's not clear so what I did then was I did drawing now they're very crude this is the supercharger one that's where we've got the socket on now that's the adjuster that's just an idler wheel that's the supercharger and that's the big crank when you undo this this comes down which enables this to be slack to be pulled off the other one this is the main one I wanted to do there's the big crank drive there's the tensioner the adjuster there's the water pump there's a power steering and there's the air conditioning when you undo that it pulls it away from there releases the slack so you can take it off that's another thing this is the new belt don't do what I did because in actual fact there are two different ones so what's the difference well this one is for cars that don't have air conditioning and this is the one that does of course I bought the wrong one I bought this one the number on it 1350 that refers to the length of the belt you'll notice on the air conditioning it's 1870 that's millimeters so obviously it's longer once again you learn from my mistakes make sure you get the right one uh, why didn't I think I had air conditioning because the air conditioning didn't work another lesson all right first thing we're going to do is take the supercharger belt off which means pulling the handle to the left and then releasing the slack so we can get it off the crank now it's off as you can see when I released it we didn't take everything off we just slackened it so we can get the one off the crank okay so now when we release this one again anti-clockwise this belt will come off and the reason why I want to change it is because we've done 110,000 miles I don't know if you can see it's got cracking on the underside so it's probably the original belt so I want to take it off so I'm going to put my tool on that one and then release that okay it's on the tensioner see it's made it slack now now it's just much pulling off of course I can't do it because I'm holding my phone but I'm gonna just pull it off and show you the the belt just slides off now you just got to do is feed it around it's off the tensioner now so it's all slack it will just come off as you can see I've took it off the water pump now and it's all slack just feed it around all the drives so now it's only on the crank okay just have to take off the crank and it's off here you can see when you put it under under a little bit of stress you can see the cracks obviously I mean it doesn't look like it's going to fail anytime soon but you know you should change these and if you try to change this side of the road you can have a bit of trouble what with all the problems I found with the tool which I didn't have before first thing we're going to do is not assume it's the right belt we're going to take this belt out and put it alongside this one make sure it's the same pleased to say it is so now we're going to do is put it back on in sort of reverse of the way we took it off so we're going to put it on the crank first as per our drawing okay as if you remember we're going to put it on the crank which is that bottom one and over to the ac and feed it round. right i've got the new belt on it took me a couple of attempts uh, obviously you can't get it on until you put tension on there remember make sure that all the belts are on the wheels correctly initially I had a problem but anyway they're all on now so if I release the tension on the tensioner check it out it's on the crank it's on there 
on the tensioner, it's on the power steering. That's 100% on. So now I haven't got a new super dry supercharger belt because I couldn't find one. So if anybody knows where you can get one from, uh, leave me a message down below because I couldn't find one. So anyway, I'm going to put this drive back on. So obviously I'm going to release the tensioner. All I did was take it off the crank, so it should just pop back on really easily. Okay, I've got the supercharger belt back on. It was a bit fiddly because it's not much room to put your hand down there, but it's on now, you can see. So release the tension on that. Check everything's on. Right, everything looks all right. So I'm gonna start it up, make sure it's, everything's going around and as it should be. Right, got the engine running. Everything seems to be working fine. So that's it. I always make a note of the mileage of when I make changes so that, because uh, I keep a record, these belts theoretically last like 100,000 miles, so possibly I'll never have to change it, but it's a good idea to keep check of it. And like I said before, if you know where you can get a supercharger belt from, then uh, can you put a message down below? Because I've hunted on Amazon, on eBay, just in general on Google, and I can't find one. It's for my 1999 SLK. As usual, if you uh, like this video and it was interesting for you, then please uh, subscribe. I mean, I don't just do car things, but as I keep this Mercedes, I'm sure there'll be other things that I need to do. Uh, please subscribe and leave comments. If you, like, I'll say it again, if you know where to get the supercharger belt from, then put a message down below so I can read it because uh, I don't know how old that one is. It's probably just as old as the other one. Thank you very much and watch out for more later.